All right, welcome back to another episode of the Block Runner Podcast. I'm your host, William, always here with your co-host, I'm Ann. What's going on, dude? On the sticks, we got TJ. Hello. And then joining us, we got three individuals. We have Based Pad. We got the CTO of Based Pad. His name is Higuana. And finally, we got the first launcher on Based Pad. It's mm. Lambda. Lambda. Welcome, guys. Thank you. Happy to be here. Thanks, thanks. Yeah, we've been hearing a Who lot cares? about... Yeah. Uh, yeah, good to have you guys because, I mean, we just recorded, like, our last Ordinal Takeover, I guess, edition of 2023 Yep. before we were doing this. And we were kind of, part of the discussion was this, this wave of, like, launching mechanisms that are probably going to manifest at some point over the next, like, six-month stretch for, for the Bitcoin ecosystem, right? Because... Up until now, we've seen mostly like um, these fungible token protocols emerge mm. and like these free fair mint distribution systems to like, you know, initiate some some semblance of an ecosystem. But but we're familiar with how things have gone down in the past. There's been a lot of launch pads yeah. like on Ethereum specifically, right? With Poker Starter. Yeah. And then that kind of got like a whole yeah. thing going. Fun times, dude. Yeah. Very interesting times. It's all logged on our channel <laughs> a couple years ago. Yeah. So we always knew at some point this is going to make its way to Bitcoin, right? But we didn't know exactly what were the mechanisms that were going to enable this to happen because, you know, it's kind of yeah, difficult. That, that, and that's what I'm curious about. Is like, how do you guys technically achieve this? Like, what are the tokens made out of? Are the BRC20s or mm. are they a new token standard? And, you know, how's the drop mechanism work? Yeah. So I guess um, <clears throat> to get everything started, if you got a base pad, if you guys can like introduce... Like yourselves, how do you guys get started in this ordinal space? And to our understanding, you're very much focused on the TAP ecosystem, which we are also mm -hmm. a part of. So you can just give us like a rundown of like your origin story and you know how um, how you guys kind of got your positioning as like the first launch pad in the uh, Bitcoin ecosystem. Yeah. So um, well, I've been in DeFi since like around 2020 and mostly on ethereum and um worked with ryoshi who's like the co-founder of shiba and mm. did some nft consulting with him and um through that like just was mainly investor though on ethereum um other than you know my time with him like didn't really work too much on it and always sat on the sidelines um but wanted to get involved when i moved over to bitcoin and and the move to bitcoin was this kind of macro economic uh, thing I identified um, in early spring of this year. It actually wasn't ordinals related. It was, mm. it was more the fact that there was even back then, you know, rumors of an ETF coming and mm. stuff like that. Um, and just the, the narrative kind of switched to, to Bitcoin. Um, so that got me into Bitcoin and then later down the road discovered um track and benny mm. and I, I you know realized like hey one of the reasons why the market had this big pump and then fell was just there weren't features that could expand us out of deployment transfer and benny and the tap protocol was kind of that answer that i think a lot of us were looking for um, a lot of builders were looking for and at that time there wasn't this protocol war we're seeing today but um you know, in the summer of this year or summer of 2023, um, you know, we saw Benny come with Tap Protocol and, and create this platform for builders to create something. Um, to me, we're here so early, we have the benefit of being able to, we're still being innovative, um, but we're able to kind of copy ideas and move them over to Bitcoin. Oh, yeah. um, so essentially it's like we know a launch pad is an essential piece um to kind of get these new, new tokens the funding they need the runway they need to you know to launch and grow this ecosystem um so we weren't you know reinventing the wheel we we saw what works on other chains and iguana can get more into kind of the technical details but we saw what worked on other chains and we you know kind of said to ourselves like why why try to do something different like we know it works it's a needed thing um and we wanted to build it natively and that's something that tap was able the features that tap offered um allowed us to to do that 
Now, you know, originally though, this idea um, based the base token, which um, is, you know, trading on Ordinal's wallet right now, that token was actually originally just this concept that I created and, and the launch pad had nothing to do with it. Um, it was just a thousand tokens. I was like, everyone, you know, deploys a millions and millions of tokens. Like I'm just going to try something different and see what happens if I just made it a super low supply. Um, and I had this, I built this kind of like small community around me of like base holders um, and then grew a team around me to build something out of that community, mm. um, which eventually became the launch pad. And I can get more into base and boost later, but boost is like our sister token that that's really what's going to power the launch pad. And then base powers a community. Um, it'll eventually become like an art project. But what it also acts as as an accelerator and feeder program into the launch pad. And then we take those essentially the companies that are born out of our community and we can place them into a launch pad and give them the runway they need. Um, so we're building synergies there, but that's kind of where we're at now is we're now ready to launch. You know, the past few months have been kind of a grind of just getting everything together um finding a project that was really going to add value to our you know to our holders and we think we found the a really amazing protocol that I, i'm really excited um to share with you today and you know lambda is just ama like an amazing new um concept you know or not really new concept but it's bringing through a very innovative innovative way smart contracts onto bitcoin which is mm. Um, really awesome to see. So you said a based and a boost. Are they tap tokens? Yes. Um, so both of those tokens are on the tap protocol, but we are able to work with tokens, um, you know, across the board, like any protocol within Bitcoin, uh, theoretically, we can handle. So that, you know, our original name was based on tap. And the only reason why we changed the name was just because it, kind of pigeonholed us into people were thinking that we could only launch tap tokens um you know given the nature of how early we are there's not enough people building for us to survive just by launching um tap projects i think eventually you know in the future tap will grow i mean they've gotten amazing support and uh, a lot behind them so there will definitely be a lot of projects down the road but we're able to work with um Meta, you know, protocols across the board and including new ones like Lambda. So we're really excited to offer an architecture that allows us to, to work across the board like that. Did you know that we're more than just a YouTube channel? We also built Mscribe, the first inscription platform built from the ground up for the metaverse on Bitcoin. Connect your bitmap ordinals and use our tools to bring your community into the virtual realm. Support us by joining the movement at mscribe.io. Like, comment, and subscribe for the latest alpha. Back to the video. Yeah, I'm kind of curious. On Tap Protocol, there's a an airdrop feature that is very inexpensive, and um, so I'm, I was assuming that you guys basically did an airdrop whenever you uh, did a, a you launch a token. But how would you do that with, like, for example, BRC20? If if you could do that with a BRC20. Sure. Yeah. So yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. Um, I think you you went is straight to a, a very important point on everything that we are doing. Um, you see, when we started doing the activities with Basepad, we knew that there were two very clear propositions we had to work with. On one side, you had projects that had um, a number of challenges in the multiple phases of their product development, be it design. Um, development, marketing, launching their tokens. And we knew eventually um, we, they would need us. We knew that being early um, and being, being so early in the, in the Bitcoin environment allows you to fairly easily become um, a, a, a successful proposition. But as times go by, it becomes harder and harder for projects to, um, to stand out from the crowd. And we knew that a launch pad would be something that eventually would become important. And on the other side of the coin, we also saw investors that perhaps don't have so much time to be spending researching different projects, researching on discords and navigating YouTube videos. 
And doing that, um, that legwork and being able to digest all the information and giving to them something that we would, we would basically give a certificate of quality and say, yes, this is a good project. Go ahead, you can invest on it. Um, obviously, you can never guarantee that something is going to be successful, but you can guarantee that a project that has the skills and resources that they are saying they need to create what they want to create. However, um, us, perhaps in a very privileged position that we are right now, we started talking to a lot of different projects, projects that were gaming projects um, related to bitmap, projects related to um, tokens only deployed, mint transfer, usual kind of stuff. And we started to notice that there are common problems, common themes. One of them is what you just mentioned, which is how can I bring liquidity to the system? Like for instance, there are so many protocols out there, but you will see a common problem, which is how can I, for instance, exchange tokens to Bitcoin or exchange tokens to any other form of value storage as let's say USDT. That is a common problem that we then um, started navigating um, our possible solutions. We thought, right, so technically, uh, is, it, is it in this protocol? Is it on that protocol? And um, because having that first launch is such an important thing for a launch pad, we started looking for a project that actually could solve some of these problems with us. And that problem that you mentioned, where well, it's not just a question of um, bringing liquidity to, to Bitcoin, but also things like, how can I bring a immediate exchange of value? Um, I'm, as a, for instance, an auto, automated market maker, like a, a, a DEX, for instance, or even, even more complex stuff like a conditional automation, as in, for instance, an if statement. If you meet these requirements, you will get these number of tokens. Mm -hmm. um, and so this took us in this journey, trying to find which project could actually partner with us and bring a solution that could potentially revolutionize the system. And I think this is a great moment to, to introduce you to, to Lambda, yeah. because this is what um, it does for us. Mm. Um, a few of us became heavily involved with, with what Lambda is doing. And he'll be able to show you a bit more in a minute. But you see that solutions for the problems such as Bitcoin integration or mm -hmm. integration of any other value, uh, value storage for that matter, as well as immediate liquidity as, as, a, as a DEX or as an uh, automated market maker. And even conditional automations, um, a smart contract per se. Mm -hmm. This is what Lambda brings to the table. And uh, before we, we get into the details of Lambda, let me outline the problem. And I want to see if, um, you know, if, if Lambda, you know, does solve the problem that I'm envisioning. So on tap, there's this uh, airdrop feature. And the way that this airdrop feature works is essentially says, I want to airdrop this token. I'm going to make a token. I'm going to airdrop it to a thousand addresses. And what the tap protocol does is basically assigns an account balance to each of those addresses. And all of a sudden your BTC address has this account balance. So you go and copy and paste your BTC address on, you know, one of their lookup uh, websites mm -hmm. and it'll tell you, say your balance is like a thousand of these tokens, mm -hmm. right? It's all of a sudden there, right? So you got an airdrop, right? You didn't have to claim anything. You didn't have to do anything. So, <clears throat> so I can understand a launch pad using this feature is like, People are paying, you know, let's say 0.01 Bitcoin. They want to access this token. And, you know, you all of a sudden you, you pay that 0.01 Bitcoin and you get this, this airdrop and your balance goes up. Right. And so it's pretty easy, pretty cheaply. And it's all done. So so I think it was based mentioned it's not only tap tokens where you we could do this. And so I was like wondering, it's like, OK, if you do this on BRC20, you can't do an airdrop because an airdrop on BRC20, you would have to actually send the tokens to an address. You would have to do on-chain transactions. Okay, yeah. And it would be extremely expensive to do that. And so you can't really do airdrops with BRC20 unless you want to pay, you know, $50, $60 per, per address. But then you can also do a claim function and then have the user uh, claim those. Which you've seen, right? Which we've seen, yeah. <clears throat> right. But then again, you're dealing with, hoping people go to the website, connect their wallet and actually claim. Mm -hmm. And it's not a very successful airdrop. Mm -hmm. um, based, would you agree with this uh, out, outline of this problem? Is, is that a fair kind of rundown? 
Yeah, and um, we before meeting Landa and what he'll get into of how this is a better solution to our, I guess, original solution for the problem was, like you said, tap makes it very easy to do, you know, a token airdrop. Um, other protocols don't allow for that. And we would basically have to do a claim. Um, that claim, we, there, we were touring around with different ideas of basically, you know, one of the main issues you get on an airdrop is people often complain that the, you know, um, they get front run mm -hmm. and it's whoever pays the most money in gas is going to be the one that claims it first. And, <clears throat> but you also don't want to give too much time to claim because then the hype kind of fizzles out. And well, if you give days to claim and, you know, it's only 50% done then like the project's over with versus giving, of course, you know, like 30 minutes and then everyone rushes it. And then, but then the fees go crazy and then normal people can't pay. Mm -hmm. And we were, we were toying around with all these ideas of, you know, putting money onto the platform um, so that it's almost like an account balance that you could remove at any time, but then the transaction already happened. So it all happened off chain from that point on. Um, but it would allow you to claim in real time and you wouldn't have to pay for like some super high gas fee and all that stuff. Um, that was one of the solutions we came up with. But I, what I think we'll get to with Lambda is how uh, the smart contracts allow us to operate more like a launch pad on Ethereum or a different chain that we don't have to do this claiming um, function the way that we originally were envisioning it. You know, we were kind of put into this box. And I think a lot of people in this space are thinking still in this box that we've been put in of like what inscriptions can do. And, and I think like what's really innovative about Lambda is it really opens the gateway to you know, sky's the limit. I mean, it's like a, it is a smart contract. You can code stuff and build stuff on it that is far beyond what we deem as possible right now. Um, Interesting. Okay. So as, yeah, as Higuana said, um, with like using an AMM, an automated market maker, um, you know, we do have plans to kind of expand also beyond uh, the launch pad and maybe move into more of like a DEX or something like that, because we recognize that this technology will allow us to do that and offer something that I think hasn't been able to been, be offered on Bitcoin yet. So maybe this would be a good time to bring Lambda in. He's sure. been very quiet, but he has a lot to show you. And mm -hmm. I think this is what your viewers will also be like telling me to shut up and just get yeah, to yeah. all the stuff I keep hyping up, you know, so uh, I'd love to get him involved right now. All right, Lambda, you're up. Let's see. Uh, what's your take on my uh, my problem outline and and Hi guys, how, how's the solution work out? Yeah, I think you made like a great outline of the problem, and yeah, based and iguana too. And now the the solution is like there's no fixed way to do it because, like the other said, it's smart contracts. You can have this like multiple ways. You can do it like Pep, for example with an airdrop function, and then you have just one single call. Um, and then it's one transaction, it's really cheap. And then every user has his balance just magically like increase or appear like in whatever they had before. Or you can go the other way, have them claim it, but like restrict it with their wallet. So um, it's like a per account basis. Um, or you can do many more ways. Like, I'm, I'm not sure how many different solutions for airdrops there are, but yeah, there can be many. Um, there can be OTC deals, like kind of you pay um, with Bitcoin and then you get it like in return in, in the same transaction. And then the protocol, uh, the project has the liquidity or the Bitcoin like without doing anything, just by the users creating the OTC deal or like accepting the OTC deal. Uh, yeah, whatever. There are many ways, I guess. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, I wanted to add one quick, quick, quick thing, guys. Um, I think it's also important to uh, point out that we're not here to say which protocol is best or which protocol is, is not enough to do what you want it to do. Um, we are big fans of all the hard work that the guys have been putting on all the different protocols across the, across the ecosystem. But I think, to me, 
it comes down to what you want to get out of the activities you are doing. So let's focus, for instance, on the airdrop problem. Um, if out of an airdrop, I want to also promote a fair distribution, you will have certain protocols. They will probably be more suitable than others. Mm -hmm. If you have a if you have a, a situation where you want to distribute your tokens, but at the same time you want to get fees or get some kind of value exchange out of it, mm -hmm. then some protocols will not be as suitable as others. And I think what we try to do here, and perhaps the biggest um, uh, the, the, the the biggest value proposition that Lambda brings is that it it allows you that flexibility of doing a peer straight airdrop in which you just spread tokens between a, a bunch of people, or you'd be able to actually uh, let some people have a number of tokens in exchange of some requirements being met, be it time, a number of tokens that you hold in your wallet, um, a, a precondition out of, um, you know, any literally anything imaginable that you possibly have in other chains like ETH or Solana. Mm -hmm. um, I I think it's also important because we, we're using a language that perhaps trying to make it to make it easy for the non-technical person, and so we're using the language as a smart contract. But I'm a big fan of how we've been talking internally, um, referring to what we've been working with is the lambda contract. Uh, a lambda contract is a contract that allows you much more than what we have been seeing on those more token-focused uh, protocols. A lot of the protocols we see today, they are focused on deploy, mint, transfer, and perhaps mm -hmm. some other uh, features around that. What Lambda brings you is much more. It does all that. Yes, yeah, great. Deploy, mint, transfer, but also it does running arbitrary code on um, you know, using inscriptions as your, as your kickoff uh, trigger. It allows you to update balances or storage. It allows you to interact with decentralized applications. That, to me, is a game changer. Mm. Yeah, I, I'm curious as to the details of how this is implemented and how this runs on top of Bitcoin. Lambda, do you want to go into details on how all that works? I think we can go in a little bit. Like some parts are still work in progress or like secret for now. Um, sure. Yeah, just yeah, tell, us, it, tell us what you can. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I think it's like, for the user, it will be similar to um, interacting with like tab tokens or ERC20 um, because it's all powered by inscriptions. So the user doesn't see a difference between like this protocol to the other, um, which is a huge plus. And then other than that, um, yeah, the, the smart contracts or Lambda contracts behave like they do in Ethereum or like other, any other um, like EVM chain or smart contract chain. <laughs> So there's no limitations of what you can do, like all in the, of course, it needs to be like a valid contract. There are like some boundaries you can't cross. Otherwise you have like some problems, like Ethereum, for example, doesn't have inbuilt random functions because you get like different random values for every different node. So like there are also some limitations and um, similar to this protocol, there are also limitations to, to what you are allowed to do in the, in the contracts. Um, but other than that, it's like you're open to do whatever. Um, yeah, we had like some examples already, like AMM, then OTC deals, or like just simple airdrops or token transfer, or like yeah, anything you can imagine, like purchase so, from other change. You could have stable coins on there, or like BSC twenty tokens, or yeah. So my uh, my curiosity is uh, where this smart contract layer interacts with the Bitcoin blockchain is, are, are you rolling up some of these transactions into like a hash value that gets injected into like an ordinal or like how, what's the, what's the interaction between the smart contract layer and Bitcoin? Yeah, there's, there's no like roll up or stuff. This is all natively on Bitcoin. Like the, the transactions or the inscriptions are taken as they are, they are and then they have, they are basically executed. Um, oh, so are, are which you- Which is like a you, more powerful index in a sense. Are you taking um, instructions as like inscriptions? So basically 
Uh, I submit an instruction, basically an inscription. I inscribe an instruction, essentially. No, 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 no. no? This would be like way too expensive to have like assembly or so in the inscription. I, no, I it's see. not. It's not like this. Okay. So then, do I deploy a smart contract and it, and I write the logic within that smart contract? And how does that deployment occur within Bitcoin? The deployment of new smart contracts. You mean? Yeah. Correct. Um, yeah, for now, this is not totally permissionless because, like I said, there are some limitations of the protocol, um, which are just social limitations and not technical. So for now, they are not permissionless per se, and the deployment is not as simple as it is on Ethereum. Uh, you, maybe it's more simple depending on the person or what tools they are used to. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, they are okay. not as permissionless for now, which will be flex, likely sold in the future to, to be able to run whatever. Um, I have like an automatic check to have valid um, contracts per default. Okay. Um, but yeah. So what? Uh, how does Lambda solve the airdrop problem? Yeah. So in my mind, I didn't. Uh, we didn't have any tests yet to do like proper airdrops, but. In my mind, it's a really simple smart contract. Um, you just drop like the, the token standard because tokens are now not on the protocol level, they are on the smart contract level, which is like further down the chain, I guess. Mm -hmm. um, and then of course you can have like another function on top of this, this token standard, which would allow like updating many balances at once. Um, if you want to do it like with one transaction and no claiming, or you can use like an AMM, for example, to do a like curved um, distribution, um, or yeah, whatever, like whatever that developer can imagine. Basically. So, okay, another question. So, are you generating tokens within the smart contract, and within that smart contract, you are allocating the a portion of those tokens to addresses? Is that how you would do an airdrop? Yeah, basically. Yeah. Okay. Like a token on a smart contract level is just keeping a balance somewhere. Yeah. It's, it's like similar to other chains. Yeah. It, it's a ledger onto itself. So do you still require the services of like uh, indexers to keep up with this stuff? Yeah, in a sense, like um, you need to get the, the inscriptions and transactions from somewhere. So I guess you need to index them and therefore it's an, like a, you need an indexer. Um, but there's more on top. So if I were to send one of these tokens to IMAN, am I going to a specific website that it has your protocol embedded into it and I type in his Bitcoin address and basically just hit send? And what are the costs associated with that? Yeah, so it's basically like a, a tab transfer. You have the inscription and then you need to send it somewhere. So it behaves the same way. Okay. Um, so are, are you still depending on like Bitcoin fees to accomplish this as well? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Of course, everything needs to be on chain. Like there's no off chain manipulation of the of the protocol. Like every every manipulation or like everything you want to do needs to be on chain in an inscription. Okay, interesting. So how does the? Uh, <clears throat> I'm assuming since uh, Lambda is a launchpad project from unbased protocol or the base launch pad, uh, you're going to have your own native token as part of this is how does that factor into this, uh, protocol design or the ecosystem and, uh, outside of, you know, leveraging Bitcoin to execute on these transaction fees and such, like, could you elaborate a little bit on that? Um, I don't think there's like a proper tokenomics for now. Um, that's just some vague ideas and what the token could do and how it could be like distributed which is via um, base pad, but no further like ideas or details now. So this will be like <clears throat> like uh, a tap token as well, or it's going to be like a native token to this Lambda protocol? This will be native, yeah, of course. Okay. So you can use it for like all the good stuff, like AMMs, mm -hmm. um, maybe borrowing lending. Interesting. And yeah, everything. 
So do you want to um, go through an example of like a use case? Uh, we talked about kind of solving the airdrop uh, situation. What's uh, what is your ideal use case for, you know, smart contracts on Bitcoin? Like, what do you see other than like automated market makers and, mm -hmm. and all that we've, we've talked in the past is like, what, what is the lowest hanging fruit in your eyes for uh, Lambda? I think AMMs are the lowest hanging fruit, like mm -hmm. compared to using like, um, I don't want to shame or then let's call it, but like it, it's basically an NFT market and you, you only have the floor press and the last press and no liquidity per se. Like you need, you need a second person basically mm -hmm. to, to trade. Um, and like AMMs offer you instant selling, buying liquidity and like being a liquidity provider also gives you like passive income in a sense, because you get like part of the, of the trade fees. Um, so it's basically native yield on, for example, your Bitcoin. How do you foresee like, um, I guess developer adoption, uh, coming to this protocol? Are you making any like, active, uh, like strategic decisions as far as like, how, how do you get, um, third party contributors to come in and leverage these new smart contracts to start to build some of these new primitives or are you more because we've seen something kind of similar roll out on inscriptions, mm -hmm. right? You know, they had their own inscription protocol. Uh, and at some point they realized, you know, we need to make this more robust, more functional. And then they built their own like dumb contract mm -hmm. uh, version of how do we bring some, some kind of like smart contract esque functionality to this ecosystem. And, but all that kind of came out of fruition from the whole, the same team, <laughs> the, yeah. the guys who have created inscriptions. They're like, you know, instead of waiting around for these outside developers to figure out how to do this they kind of rolled out everything themselves do you foresee you having to kind of like you know do that as well like you know build the automated market maker solution uh and continue from there just to kind of like you know ref showcase that there is this DeFi potential in this protocol so that's one of the areas that i think we're really going to come in is base pad has seen you know the potential of what these smart contracts can not only do for the launch pad but also allowing us to expand into you know a real dex i think like this space like what um lambda is getting at is the there's like this void right now there's this need for a real legitimate dex that's going to provide immediate liquidity um most dexes have like a launch pad attached to it we kind of did it the opposite mm. direction where we have the launch pad and we're going to build out a DEX, mm. but we hope to showcase to other people what's possible with these smart contracts um, by offering a DEX, by offering farming, liquidity pools, bridging, all that stuff to really showcase what's possible on Lambda. Um, yeah. We've also, I don't know, Lambda, if you want to talk about kind of a possible hackathon in the future and stuff like that to get people involved in terms of making new smart contracts, expanding what's possible. You know, we can't do, you know, Lambda can't do everything himself and yeah. we can't, you know, do it all just on base pad. We're hoping other people in the community can kind of put their heads together and expand and create more smart contracts um, on Lambda to really expand the capabilities of what this protocol is able to do. Yeah, a couple of the, of the things that we have been working with Lambda is uh, um, not only the hackathon, where he's going to be able to showcase what he's been working around um, a dev toolkit. I'm a dev myself, um, and I was so I felt so refreshed to to see what he was building um, and how he's enabling people like me to also build those smart contracts, those Lambda contracts, um, by not only creating the the dev toolkits but also making it um, feasible with very common languages. Um, you only need um, decent skills on TypeScript, Rust, or even uh, JavaScript. This is all compatible. And you, you'd be able to build those Lambda contracts if you, if you know what you're trying to do. Hmm. So when you, when you deploy these smart contracts, are they on a separate network? Or how, how, how do you actually like deploy it? Um, yeah, the deployment is like 
in a sense that that execution doesn't happen on chain um, because like the inscription has all the information and then the if you go back to tokens like all the balances doesn't have to stay on chain like similar Correct. to the other protocols basically right nothing is on chain just like the sequence of inscriptions um results always in the same like token balances for example hmm. and it's the same with with lambda protocol so like the sequence of inscriptions always results in the same like um, end and end state or like end um, resu result hmm. okay. so when when yeah. do you foresee this hackathon occurring i don't think there are any co concrete plans now of course it needs to happen like soonish after the launch um maybe even after the token launch so there could be a prize pool or so mm -hmm. but i don't think there are further plans or like more concrete plans for now mm -hmm. um but yeah like iguana said it's it's really simple um there's the the, the death toolkit which makes it like yeah fairly simple to to do like anything you want um it's in typescript which is i think more familiar with developers than solidity for example for evm mm -hmm. and it feels more natural also the um like the apis you have used um you have access to in the smart contract make it feel more like basically like a uh not like a smart contract but just a normal um, um web service for example mm. it's not too different compared um to like a normal development in TypeScript. So for for this token, for Lambda token, is this more like a like a gas token or is it a utility token? Like like what's the utilization of the of the token itself? Um, it, we uh, it's not sure yet. Um, utility, of course, maybe also as gas token, um, or like as protocol token because the. The protocol is native on Bitcoin. There's no like second execution layer, a layer two or something where you need to pay um, like fees again, in a sense, um, because it's you only pay the fees in Bitcoin. And then there's the, the protocol itself, um, which is not an, a different layer or a different chain, but it's native on Bitcoin, which might have um, protocol fees, which might be in the Lambda token or in the Bitcoin token. Mm -hmm. It's like a work in progress and not fixed yet or not decided yet. Did you know that we're more than just a YouTube channel? We also built MetaZone, the first app store for the metaverse. Buy, sell, and explore a new class of digital assets like our flagship game Rovi.ai. Support us by collecting your digital assets through MetaZone at MetaZone.io. Like, comment, and subscribe to stay updated. Back to the video. Yeah, it would be interesting to see, um, <clears throat> you know, I guess uh, getting this e this protocol up and running and uh, deploying some, some of these DeFi primitives and, you know, executing on some of these, these visions you guys have, um, because you have a, we have a reference point, I guess, right now, as far as like, who else is attempting this? And we've been tinkering around in that ecosystem of, of Alex labs, <clears throat> right? Like the, this idea of building or bringing some kind of smart contract ability to Bitcoin. Like you said, this is definitely, it's not new. It's something that's been envisioned for, for many, many years now. That, that team specifically has been working towards that. But if you actually utilize their tools, <laughs> there are many difficulties, right? Because as the current state of stacks, yeah, it's a layer two, but it is not like, it's basically like a, a mirror of Bitcoin, right? So it is equally as slow, equally as like inefficient, and therefore the products of DeFi are not very user-friendly in its mm -hmm. current state, right? That's just the truth, right? So a lot of people who are experiencing that very urgently awaiting this thing called the Nakamoto release, right? Which is supposed to really ramp up this like block production yeah, rate. Five seconds. Correct. So <clears throat> do you foresee, like, cause you're, you're kind of creating this new competitive smart contract environment to something like that, that exists. And there's already like established issues. Like, you, you know, you, you gotta have smart contracts, but to achieve some sort of like usable DeFi ecosystem, scalability at some point is gonna become like the, the front centered issue. Like, do you foresee maybe some sort of transition 
once you get past like a proof of concept stage to where, you know, this is all going to kind of manifest into a layer two ecosystem at some point to Bitcoin. No, I don't think it, and like Lambda protocol itself will transition to another, or like the layer two or roll up, for example, mm. it will stay native on Bitcoin. Mm -hmm. But there are like some features already to keep like the transaction and the, the cost for the users low, um, which we can't share for now, but they're really cool and make it in some ways more powerful than, for example, Ethereum transactions. Mm. So this will be cool to see in the future and um, have users experience with this. Okay. Do you want to uh, show an example of Lambda in action? Is is that something possible that you can show us today? Yeah. Um, I prepared some demos. Okay. Um, for example, I think the one I will show today is today is the basically making a swap from Bitcoin to to a protocol token and the other way around. Um, the inscriptions themselves are on testnet, so it's like it's legit. There's no there's no like, um, I don't know what the word, but it's, it's legit. It's working uh, on testnet already. And yeah, when we launch, it will be on mainnet. But let me share my screen. Um, one sec. Yeah, this is interesting. I mean, smart contracts, it's heavily needed. We need to use it. Smart contracts? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty sure anybody who's got any like intention to develop something beyond just like a, you know, shit coin mm -hmm. is kind of like waiting on the horizons for something like this. Right. Yeah. It's a, it's a, it's essential. It's an essential component to development. Right. Especially if you're in the gaming space, which we are. <laughs> All right. So yeah, I think even, even for shit coins, it's like cool too. Yeah. yeah that's true. And the yeah. and AMM. So that's a good point. it's like benefits all around. Some functional shit coins, dude. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, let me walk you through it. Um, so basically we have like some transaction token explorer already, mm -hmm. um, which connects to the underlying protocol. So it's all stuff which happened on chain is then like visualized here in, in like a transaction explorer. Um, but you can also show the AMM. So basically the, trans uh, the demo I, I prepared is swapping. Um, I think is this is like one test token for Bitcoin, um, which is native Bitcoin just bridged to the protocol. Mm -hmm. And I think this is the demo. Um, this is the AMM. It's just really simple, um, of course, for, for demo purposes. But basically, you can choose which token you want to swap. And then you see the amount you will receive. Um, so yeah, if you sell 0 0.01, USD, you get like, I think for us, Satoshi should this be, if I'm correct. Mm -hmm. So how is this um, being, how is this working? How, <clears throat> you know, are there liquidity pools that are uh, like on, yeah, the, exactly. on the back end of this? Um, okay. So, so that, mm -hmm. that means I, I would need to supply liquidity for B, PUSD and BTC mm -hmm. in order to exactly, earn yeah. tokens here. And yeah, if I, if we go to like, um, I don't, I didn't highlight it correctly, but this is basically basically the transaction which created the pool. Um, let's create pool in it, and then you can see what happened. Um, it's basically the token, are the, the both tokens, Proto and Bitcoin. I think it's this with PUSD, let me check. Yeah, basically PUSD and Bitcoin was transferred to the AMM to provide liquidity for like users to trade to, into okay, um, interesting so this so is that's be... liquidity yeah and mm -hmm. we can use this now okay so you got contract method so <clears throat> as people i guess design their own contracts and their new functionalities and such like uh, this logic that is being i guess broadcasted from these contracts like that is what's going to be populated here on this dashboard right this is just like an explorer yeah, of yeah. different deployed contracts and then different i guess um transactions that are pulling from that information right yeah exactly these these are like um indexed inscriptions yeah. which were executed either mm -hmm. successfully or also with errors if 
if you basically if you want to transfer more tokens then you have um it errors out because that's not allowed hopefully that the contract doesn't allow this can you um, show us what the inscription looks like no um this is hidden for now because um it contains like some logic which might be easy to um yeah to figure out the underlying stuff or at least have an idea how it works behind the scenes well it's i mean it's it's private for now but but these are on block on the blockchain so if you find the transactions i mean you could look at the data that's in there right yeah yeah of course okay okay so so the inscription itself will tell you a little bit about like how all this like works internally yeah in a sense um like that's what the inscription reveals like some details not about the implementation but like the basically the protocol flow or the data flow sure um but yeah, no, hey, not any internal um, implementation details. And you know, like, have you go to but, Ether Scan and you, you know, you see like an, an NFT on Ether Scan and there's like a smart contract mm -hmm. section there, right? And it's, yeah, you it, can actually read see the smart all the contract. functions and such. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. So all that, like readability, these functions, that's going to be present on the inscription itself, or is this some sort of other? Yeah, how, how would I how would I go and read this smart contract? Is is the smart contracts like publicly like readable, like Etherscan? Yeah, yeah, of course. This, okay. uh, this will all be be public because, um, like it's allowed for other users or like other developers to create their own index index and reuse, um, the contracts basically to came or to come to the same conclusions. Yeah. Um, so this is, this is all public, um, when it gets launched sure yeah okay wow. and yeah i think this will also be like similar to etherscan like you said with the with the contract in there so you can read the source code and check if everything is correct or mm -hmm. if there are like some bugs or even malicious code in there um but yeah to get back to the demo because it takes some time to have the uh, bitcoin transaction mined on on the test net mm -hmm. so i will send this now um like I said, it's basically this okay. transaction swapping um, 0 0.01 BUSD for for like some amount of Bitcoin. Mm -hmm. um, when this is finished, we, sh oh, where is it? we should see both the the balance change um, of Bitcoin. And mm -hmm. um, basically, I think it's easier to see for the USD because we would expect to have. 0 0.98 afterwards because we give yes they didn't receive Bitcoin. <laughs> and, uh, we can also see the transaction here but let me send it now mm -hmm. um let me check yeah it's this one so, i don't think you can see my oh you can see the wallet I think. yeah we can see it so as you're doing this um i guess you, um so if somebody could answer a, <clears throat> you know at what point in stage do we, can this become, I guess, a little more public at the sense like uh, um, people can kind of like interpret this smart contract language code and, you know, create their own. Uh, yeah, I guess when's the, when's the launch date, right? Yeah, like on, on this test net, is it going to be like a test net phase first just to kind of like iron out, see if there's any bugs? And then eventually this is going to be kind of like fully officially made public or is it already like internally been tested enough to the point where you're you're predicting like an official launch much sooner than than later um like uh, basically i can say two things about this um mm -hmm. like the first thing about any potential bugs or like um like mistakes in the protocol itself they can all be solved because mm -hmm. um even if you have like faulty code or buggy code in, in the index, for example, mm -hmm. you can just fix it and basically re-index the, mm -hmm. um, the chain from the, the launch date because you have the sequence of inscriptions anyway. So if you have any bugs in there, they, and then you fix it, you have maybe some downtime until you have um, like indexed the transaction and created all the balances again and all the stuff. So this is not a big problem. Um, if Spark contracts are are faulty or buggy this is a different problem problem because they are immutable so this is not so easy to fix um, mm -hmm. other than not using the smart contract anymore 
Um, yeah, but for launch date, um, I don't think there's like any co concrete plans, but probably in, in January, um, mm -hmm. if everything goes well, um, might be just a public beta launch with some limitations, um, like the amount of like money um, that can be on the protocol and to keep users safe and to keep like the emotions low if something goes wrong. Mm -hmm. Yeah, of course. <laughs> but yeah, it will be like a full public launch with all like open source afterwards. Um, so users can basically run their own index and don't have to like trust me or like mm -hmm. any other person running a, a indexer for them. So I think this is a, a really cool thing and should be like this way, if you develop like some um, stuff for Bitcoin or like any other um, blockchain, basically. Yeah. So what we're looking at here is the ability to create logic in a way where it's you you have like on chain conditions that trigger the smart contract logic to execute potentially, and but we're still having to pay the Bitcoin fees in order to enable this. Is would would that be a good summarization? Yeah, exactly. Because you have to pay Bitcoin fees for the Bitcoin transaction. Okay. I, I don't think there's any way around this. Right. Okay. So uh, what, what's your take on layer twos? Is that uh, is that like a bad idea uh, from, from your perspective? Or what do you think? Um, it, it's funny because I'm more, I'm honestly more of Ethereum and like Ethereum layer two guys. So I see the benefits of it. Um, mm -hmm. Even though, like, Ethereum block times are really, really short compared to to Bitcoin, um, I still see the benefits of it. But on the other side, there's like some, um, some, what's the word? Like Trade some offs. benefit also to to be on on mainnet or to be on like Bitcoin itself. Um, yeah, the the trade offs is if you go to layer two, it's probably more centralized. It's probably also yeah. cheaper as a result and faster as a result. Mm -hmm. But yeah. uh, mm -hmm. but that's the trade off. Like if, but that enables certain markets, right? Markets for like gaming, <laughs> right? They're not going to pay fifty dollars for a two dollar asset, right? Right. But they they'll pay three cents for a two dollar asset mm -hmm. on a layer two. Yeah. 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 And if you if it's like done correctly, you still have like most of the security of Bitcoin itself, depending on um, the the implementation and the centralization of the, of the layer two, basically. Mm -hmm. So I think if this, if when it is more mature, there will be like more layer twos on Bitcoin, for example, too, or Ethereum or any other chain. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, going back to the demo, um, I don't know if you saw, but the, the block has been mined with our transaction. Yeah, we saw it. Which, which in turn should have executed the transaction. Um, and yeah, that's it. Like the time. And then yeah. when we look, we can see what happened. Mm -hmm. So basically we moved the, the USD and they are not SMLs. So this might be confusing. Yeah. Um, because we only work with integers to keep rounding errors, like close to zero. Um, but it's the same as like hundred USD for four Satoshi. Mm. So if we go here, it's. Yeah. Like what we expected. Yeah. If we update this now, because the liquidity inside the pool changed. Now we need to update this token too. We should expect to get less. Um, it's mm. not a lot because we didn't take a lot of Bitcoin, yeah. but we can say it when we want to buy more um, Bitcoin. I see. Yeah, this is interesting. Mm. So all, all this was like executed via the smart contract. So, <clears throat> mm -hmm. so, so, I guess this dashboard is very similar to like Etherscan, where we're able to see everything here. Um, so what's left to build? Yeah. Like, um, how do we how do we start testing this? Like, how how do I get involved in like trying out and building these smart contracts? Because we're we're over here with uh, limited capabilities with what we see on Bitcoin, mm -hmm. and we'd like to see how we can leverage smart contracts for what we're doing. Yeah, I think. W we are as excited as the users as you guys. Um, so we can't wait to launch it, but it's not completely done yet. Um, it's like some more smart contracts, which um, are expected at launch. 
um, because in, you want to have the bare necessities. Um, for example, a, a proper AMM, um, yeah. then maybe some farming contract and like some demo tokens, for example, or, or the DMT, like the deployment transfer, but on a on a smart contract level and not on the protocol level. Mm. Um, Have you seen anybody? And then, uh, it's, I'm sorry. <clears throat> Have you seen anybody else like um, working in this realm? Because I think you know we uh, our personal prediction is we are kind of like exiting this this dumb era of you know uh, inscriptions and yeah the inscription era of what's been happening on ordinals and Bitcoin and I th- I feel like this is kind of slowly coming to an end in a sense because you know it, it, it can't just go on forever where we don't have some actual value being generated, some like fun, some, some function and such. And we're entering a period where, you know, projects like yourself, developers are going to have to come up with these solutions to tackle these major problems, right? That's going to attract a new generation of developer, right? So have you seen anybody else kind of like in the, in this same space, building something interesting from your perspective, or are you in a class of your own really working on this stuff? I can, Um, I can tell you that as from the perspective of working, in a launch pad and getting into meetings with a number of different types of projects. Uh, like I said before, projects building gaming, projects building um, some sort of exchange of value and um, getting to know exactly what they're building, getting to know exactly what the, te- the teams are trying to build. And um, this is where we started bumping into those problems that you can see Lambda trying to solve right now. That's where we saw a common problem in trying to uh, integrate Bitcoin or other forms of value. Um, immediate liquidity, that was a, a prompt issue to every time that we tried to talk to a project that had a token in different um, current Bitcoin protocols and not being able to com- complete sales, sales from you know their tokens to Bitcoin, for instance. Um, and obviously what, um, what Lambda just showed which is a, a conditional um, a smart function that is triggered by an inscription. We, we haven't seen that before. Mm-hmm. Um, so it was that very, uh, the very same ability to talk to different projects that led us in this path, because we, the three of us, we have been working together now for a little while, um, and we started seeing that common theme, and that's where um, Lambda saw a clear possibility um, to launch what what they have what he has built. Do we have a projected date for this uh, token launch? At the moment, it's all gearing up for it at some point in Q one. I think technically we could be there next month, but I think there's a lot to be discussed around marketing, mm-hmm. around how uh, it affects us as a team. Uh, I think it's discussion discussions that are still maturing and there is so much that's entertaining us right now right now i'll be honest with you our excitement has been mostly around what we can do with this beauty there's so much that we can do right now yeah. we, we're feeling like little kids at the moment so what's the state of base pad is is it ready to like uh launch like tokens like or are you just like waiting for your your uh your partners to like get ready to launch their own tokens or like what's the state of it that's Great question. Shall I take that base to, to go for Yeah, that? yeah, go ahead. So BasePad has been um, a, a, a very close um, development about where I was managing the, uh, the developers around it. And we have already built the solution. The solution is, is there. Um, we have our team co- currently uh, testing the functionality which basically takes you to um, the following functions. You as a user, you can um, simply hold our tokens. By holding our tokens, um, our solution is able to calculate rewards um, just by holding it. And it also gives you a tier level. By holding our tokens, you earn that tier level, and that tier level will give you a allocation for every IDO or every initial token offering that we have in our platform, um, Lambda being one of them. But um, there are now a pipeline of projects in which we are mm. having complex discussions and all getting ready to, to launch uh, subsequently. 
So now you are able to connect to our platform. You are able to see your tier level. You are able to get rewards. And on an IDO date, you are able to purchase um, either your complete allocation or a partial allocation. Or you can fade on it and go and wait for the next IDO. Uh, the solution is ready. It's now for us, the total focus has been to find the right first project. Mm -hmm. And this is where Lambda comes in. So at the risk of uh, throwing water in the party, what's your take <laughs> on the regulation on the side of like, uh, you know, uh, potentially allowing Americans to purchase these tokens? Do you have like KYC set up and all that? This yeah, is so yeah, we're right now, um, for now, what we're doing, especially with like the first launch, um, is trying to stay away from essentially making money on like the token sales side, at least for the first few launches. One, because we are new um, and we believe this like will buy us some time in terms of regulation. We probably, we don't want to implement KYC, which is why we will will follow your local regulations and basically we won't allow people in in countries that um that aren't very kind to crypto launch pads mm -hmm. we have to do everything in our power to restrict them from using launch pad um but we don't want to go the kyc route of like making someone you know put their id and stuff like that um, we'll essentially operate like every other um, decentralized exchange or decentralized finance product where we can see, you know, where the computer is accessing the website and then we will follow the guidelines of that country. Yep. Um, addresses. yep. So we, you know, unfortunately that's kind of what we have to do. We don't really like that. I mean, and part of the reason why I got into finance or decentralized finance was um, because I, at least in finance, I have more of like a libertarian mindset. I wish, you know, I, I think it's such a powerful tool to give people control over their money and custody over their money. Um, so it's upsetting that, you know, that regulation is, especially in the U S really hard on, on crypto consumers and people who, want to use our launch pad. Um, so, but you know, we have to kind of follow those regulations to make sure that we're operating in the, you know, strong legal standpoint, we're working with, you know, a, a legal team in terms of where to incorporate, um, you know, what country would be most crypto friendly and how to operate in a way that provides the most anonymity for our users. Um, I never want to make someone give us their ID or anything like that. Uh, I'm pretty much vehemently against that. Uh, I don't think that follows the ethos of crypto and, and Web3. So we will do everything in our power to allow people to use our platform um, with the greatest amount of anonymity. But, you know, that's something that we will also have to kind of work around the guidelines set by individual countries that you're accessing our website from and and we will follow those just to ensure that we are you know operating legally yeah yeah fair enough yeah because the last thing you want is uh someone knocking on your door and asking questions well that's right. that's <laughs> that's the risk everybody in web3 yeah to kind of like deal with but i'm a little curious about like um um like i guess the tokenomics of uh of Lambda in particular, since it is the first um, known token that's going to be launched, deployed through this uh, launchpad mechanism. Is this like a, because we just saw one today on Alex Labs, their multi-chain launchpad. They did, I think Ord's Games did an IDO today. And the allocation for that IDO was very small. Yeah. <laughs> right? It was like uh, probably 000. less than a percent of their overall token supply, right? So... Is it going to be similar to that, like uh, on your platform, or is there like an, the, the entire supply is up for allocation? Like, how's this going to work? Yeah. So, um, like really any launch pad, um, it's as a team and as a launch pad, you negotiate individually um, with each 
token that you're going to launch, you kind of figure out a step four price, um, as well as a percentage of the total supply that makes the most sense for the protocol or for the, sorry, I said protocol, but for the project um, that's launching with us. We are still working with Lambda on figuring that out. Um, they're still a little early in terms of tokenomics. And that's one of the things that we do and one of the services we offer is a consultancy um, with projects in terms of what their supply should be like, um, you know, what the floor price should initially be, something that's both fair for our users, you know, our base and boost holders, as well as for the project, because, you know, we're in a position where, yes, we want to we want to give our users the best price, but we also want to give the projects we work with enough runway to actually be able to grow as a project, which inevitably will provide more value for the holders, um, which are our users. So there's kind of this, uh, you know, symbiotic relationship between the holders of the tokens and the project and finding a price that works for both, you know, so that our users feel like they're getting a kind of early bird deal on the token while also providing a fair market value for the project going forward. Mm -hmm. Um, so we will obviously we encourage i think um you know the projects that launch with us to be more in you know the 10 percent range or you know the i would say like at a very low point five at a more high point 15 to 20 percent it's understandable why a project doesn't want to you know do their entire token supply or why they would want to do you know a, a higher token supply because they see this they, what they want to do is get the most marketing um the most kind of bang for their buck in terms of marketing from the launch pad while also being able to have a really nice public launch that allows them to make more money off of a sale because a launch pad they're kind of selling their token a little bit of a discount. I mean, that's that's the business model really of the launch pad. Mm -hmm. We offer a platform for you to grow off of, um, but you're gonna basically sell your tokens for a little bit cheaper so that those who use the launch pad, you know, find benefit in that. Um, so we, we definitely encourage, especially projects today that there's not as many out there where we're entering a bull run, but we're not there yet um you know some projects do still get like lost in noise and we do feel like there's like definite definite value in terms of using a launch pad and i mean clearly as the space grows there's only more value because there's just more and more noise um but we definitely encourage our projects to to have a higher token percentage than you know one percent or less than one percent i think that's that's not enough um to really get the one for the people that use the launch pad as well as it helps the project like just starting a community especially with lambda like we kind of we want to build a community around the the protocol early on and because we want to also lambda wants to slow roll it a little bit make sure everything's okay you don't want a big public sale initially that's like everyone's going to be using it and it's harder to figure out where the bugs are where the fixes and changes need to be made um so we're excited to offer this as like our first token. Um, and we hope to offer a bigger token supply than uh, 1% to our, mm. to our base and boost holders. Cool. Base, did you have anything to share uh, screen share uh, for us today? Yeah. Um, I can just go real quickly into the base pad tiers and talk a little bit about you know, I, I spoke earlier about how base pad initially started was, you know, it was just the thousand base tokens and this uh, idea for a community of people mainly on tap who were builders and, and stuff like that. And um, how that eventually, though, grew from this kind of like private alpha community into this idea for a launch pad. Um, but we quickly you know realize like base the token base is not going to work 
for a for a launch pad if there's only a thousand of them. Mm -hmm. um, so we created the sister token Boost, and Boost main function is to act as um, basically a way for you to qualify for one of the tiers you see on this base bad tiers chart. So essentially, if you own Boost just by holding Boost in your wallet and connecting your wallet to our website. Um, we're essentially perpetually checking your wallet for the amount of boost you hold. If you hold, let's say 1.8 million, or sorry, 1.8 billion boost, um, you will earn 234,019 boost per day. And this is liquid staking. So you're not giving up custody of your boost. You're just holding it. So you're actually earning boost just by holding boost. And then you get this whitelist allocation. So let's say the white the one X whitelist allocation is a hundred tokens. By being a paladin, you will have the ability to purchase 120 tokens. Paladin is our first tier level that um, guarantees you a whitelisting allocation. At Overlord, if the whitelisting allocation was a hundred tokens, is the one X then you get an allocation of a thousand tokens and you can purchase those. Hmm. Our top three tiers requires the holding of base alongside of boost, but it's only a single base token. Um, what base offers though, is far beyond, it's far beyond like the launch pad tiers. It gets you into this higher echelon of tiers. Um, but based itself is more of a private community, like access to a private community um, where we offer airdrops from the launch pad. The launch pad itself will mainly charge fees in terms of Bitcoin, some type of percentage of the sale that we raise. Um, but a lot of times a launch pad will take a small percentage of uh, tokens from the supply they also, you know, launch through. Um, what we want to do is basically, instead of keeping those tokens, airdrop them to base holders um, and offer opportunities for base holders to basically win extra tokens um, through every time we launch. Um, we also offer what base will become because 1,000 is like really small. We're going to expand to 10,000 um, and that will actually all based tokens will turn into an art project. I say the term NFT. I know that pisses some ordinals people off, but I just feel like that communicates what I'm trying to say as best as possible. Mm -hmm. We have a NFT project um, that I am working on and something that we're hoping to basically create a burn method to burn your original base token for an NFT. And then in the future, each base token or NFT you hold, every time we expand the community, you will get airdropped one token. So every time we expand the, the or so let's say we move from 1000 to 2000, um, like total supply of base, you'll get airdropped that way you're not, your shares aren't diluted. Mm -hmm. um, we want to make sure that people who bought in like early, like right now, if you see like on Ordinal's wallet, I don't know if anything's changed since then. Um, it hasn't, but our tokens are 3,400. We see, you know, that it, it basically fluctuates between now like 3,300 and $4,000. People spend a lot of money on these base tokens because they see the value of not only based itself and that's something that like i got into a little bit but the other thing is that the only way to get boost is th by holding base at this moment so we have a boost airdrop to all base holders mm. um the snapshot will be taken at 7 p.m utc on january 6th um so right now if you own one base you get airdropped 1.8 billion. If you own five base, you airdrop 6 billion. We've had people complain about the fact that 
it's actually better to own one base in five wallets and five base in five yeah. different wallets. The truth is we, what we're trying to promote here is the, we don't want people to own five base. It's really the honest answer. We don't want to own people want people to own two base. We want every, we want a thousand holders of one base and we want to incentivize that. We understand that for now, um, you know, sometimes people get confused because they think overlord needs five based. It doesn't, you know, these top tiers only require one base. Every benefit of being a base holder only requires one single base. Right. We want to incentivize holders so that the membership of the community will not only become more powerful through the ownership, through a, you know, a thousand owners of one than like 300 owners of like five. Um, but we also believe like the price will go up as well. You know, if each person only owns one base, they're really going to cherish that one base. Um, and as we expand slowly over time to 10,000, we can maintain um that exclusivity we want to offer eventually in-person events the nft project we're working on one of the great things about lambda is it allows us to offer nfts that operate more like the ones on ethereum do where we can actually offer like hd level projects um we can have cool mechanisms behind it in terms of personalizing your nft um, making it look more like you or identifying the way that you want to. Like, these are all things that we want to, you know, based inevitably will go down in price after the airdrop because some people are just buying it to get access to boost. Mm -hmm. But what I've been re reiterating to the community is that we have so many more plans for based as this exclusive token, this exclusive community one of those is this very exciting NFT project we're working on that I think will offer a truly native Bitcoin NFT that doesn't just look like some like 8-bit pixel. It's a very high quality NFT of 10,000. Right now, you basically choose between an NFT project that has like sub 1K, oftentimes like 1 to 300 of, you know, pretty high quality images or you have 10K and it's like 8-bit pixel art, mm -hmm. which is fine and I think speaks to the community, this like 8-bit retro look. But that can't be all that there is. And that's also one of the exciting things I think about Lambda um, in its entirety is this ability to bring really beautiful artwork onto Bitcoin the way that, you know, Ethereum does. Um, so these are just like, that's some of the benefits of holding base. But I think what people really need to look out for is the snapshot, which may or may not have already happened, depending on when this comes out. But this is all to say, if it did already happen by the time this comes out, base still has a lot more benefits. One of those, namely, is that if you're excited about Lambda, um, if you're excited about getting in on that token and you want a 10x you know, multiple on your whitelist allocation, um, you know, that's the only way to do it right now. Like we're exclusively launching the Lambda token and access to it will require the ownership of Base and Boost. So we're also excited about that and, and many more projects to come that, you know, we want to provide for our, uh, our Base and Boost holders. Yeah, this uh, this breakdown is very helpful um, in trying to kind of understand like the the breakdown of how how these tokens are going to be distributed and like the value of based and um, you know how that applies to like uh, projects like like a lambda right so so this is very interesting um, all right so last last message um, since uh, since it's getting pretty late for some of you guys out there um, any any grain takeaways that you want to let our community know or any final words. Well, yeah. if, uh, go for it. No, go ahead, Iguana. No, because I spoke enough. I, was, <laughs> I just hated the silence. Uh, I guess I, I just wanted to say that it's been a pleasure talking to you guys. I think um, everything that we are today came out of ideas that originally 
wanted to target some of the key problems that our community faces, which is, you know, I'm, I'm the owner of a project and out there, there's a lot of examples of fair mint projects where they have great tech, they have great ideas, but they end up a little bit short on their ability to bring resources, to mm. bring high level skillful developers from other blockchains perhaps or from the web two world. Yeah. And this is something that we are very conscious. Uh, we are very keen to help with as part of our mission. When we go and we help all these projects in the different phases of the, of the development, the idea is that we not only uh, uh, help them to create the right product, the right marketing, the right, um, the right development team, but also to help them to think about the tokenomics, to think about the, how can they fund themselves, not for the short period, but that they, that they will require for them to launch that token. So also for the entirety of that project, you know, how long do they um, need in order to fulfill all their dreams? And that's the kind of stuff that I think uh, we are the most proud of. We are a bunch of visionaries. We like to think about the future. Uh, this is how Lambda was vastly conceptualized. And I think uh, what, when Bayes comes and talks about all the different new things that we're thinking of, I think people just being just in the tip of the iceberg. There's a, a lot more coming from Basepad, and uh, thanks for the platform. Yeah. I think you're addressing something very interesting and something we've talked about a lot is, uh, you know, development sustainability mm -hmm. across all of Web3. And right now, yeah, a lot of what has kind of like gained traction and kind of exploded natively from ordinals is definitely like these, this ethos of free mint distribution and such. And there's a reason why there's not much of a... I guess there's not much of an expectation as far as like uh, man, how far can some of these tokens go as far as delivering something of substance, right? Because there's no real, there's no way to sustain developers yeah. unless they're like holding a lot of the token themselves that was freely distributed. That is basically your incentive as a developer to contribute to that, to the value of that ecosystem. So it is going to be interesting to see more experimentation around this. Like how do we get more developers to sustain their activity? on bitcoin and yeah i mean uh <clears throat> yeah definitely uh excited to see you guys kind of like you know dabble into this space and you know you're gonna have a life i think my prediction you're gonna have a little bit of contention in the beginning because yeah there is a pretty strong ethos of like you know everything has to be free and fairly distributed right but there is a like a, a large misunderstanding as far as like how difficult development actually is yeah <laughs> how expensive it is Right, so I think you we'll find out over time. You're absolutely right. What people sometimes forget to appreciate, perhaps, is that um, right now we are in a phase in the Bitcoin world where um, everything is new. We are all early, and we are when you are early on something, it is fairly easy to succeed. But as time goes by and challenges such as, uh, like you say, uh, like Bay said earlier. Uh, the noise that's generated by the amount of projects that start popping up, but not also not, uh, also think about scalability issues. You know, how do you uh, bring the skills and resources necessary to face scalability issues, to face accessibility issues? And these are things that um, people often forget that um, when you do something that's purely fermin, that I retain a number of tokens and I am forced to find the right time in the market to sell my own tokens, to fund my own team, it becomes really difficult. Liquidity is a serious issue. And here we are, perhaps in the biggest liquidity pool in the world, which is Bitcoin, in the crypto world, which is Bitcoin, and we are failing to tap into that liquidity to build something that's truly, um, truly memorable, truly magical. Such and a we good can. Point. Yeah, such a good point. Yeah, I, I love what you guys are doing with Based and uh, Lambda. This is very interesting. I can't wait to get my hands on to you know yeah. the how smart contracts of of what you're building kind of work, and uh, I'm looking forward to kind of implementing that because we sort of need this. And tapping into like the liquidity is quite the pr unexpected problem, right? Mm -hmm. Because there's so much here, but yet there's not enough. It's weird. Uh, but thank you guys for joining the podcast. I really appreciate your time. I know it's getting super late. Um, if there are any questions in the uh, in the audience, let us know in the comment section below. Let's stay in touch with Basepad and Lambda as well. Looking forward to this uh, this launch, and uh, I really appreciate you guys. Hey, thank, thank you so you. much for having us on. Thank you. 
All right. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Bye-bye, guys. Thank you. Thanks. Ciao.